Hello, I am the Programming Dunce, and in this video I am going to discuss the mixture of C and C++. I am getting the experience of doing just that in developing a university operating system. The OS is mostly written in C and assembly, but I have recently began adding C++ to my build. I am a TA for the class that uses this OS, so that I have time to explore. I'd rather make more progress on this OS before I begin a video series about OS development, so I'm going to focus on the mixture of C and C++. I'm also going to use a Linux environment, as GCC is a compiler that compiles both C and C++. By default, it uses C or C++ depending on the file extension of the source file although there are command line arguments you could use to alter this behavior. For this video, I'm just going to take advantage of GCC's file extension functionality. You may also have heard of G++. However, all G++ does is load the GNU implementation of the C++ standard library and call GCC. In a project that leverages both C and C++, you will need at least one header file that is included by both a C source file and a C++ source file. In this header file, we have header guards as usual to prevent the header file from being processed more than once. We then leverage the C preprocessor to determine if the macro underscore underscore C++ is defined. If the compiler is using C++, then this macro is defined. In C mode, it is not defined. We use extern C only if the compiler is reading it from the C++ perspective. This ensures that anything inside uses C linkage. C and C++ use their own rules for linking. This ensures that C rules will be used. Consequently, a function declared extern C could be implemented in C++ and use C++ specific code, such as objects, variables and namespaces, and overloaded operators, while still being called by C code. Let's do an overview of the example in slide mode before I demonstrate on the desktop. Let's have a class called CPP object. All it really does is have some integer value and print using IOStream. To make it sweeter, let's put this class in a namespace called C underscore namespace. As usual, the class declaration should be placed in a header file along with attributes and method declarations. The method implementations will be in the corresponding CPP file. We will then have functions that will call the various methods of an object in a second CPP file. This CPP file will implement the functions that can be called by C. This is because this second CPP file will include both the class header file and the C compatible header file where its functions are declared. On to the desktop portion you will see that I have a text editor called getit open as well as the bash terminal. The class I'm using has a basic constructor, a setter method for its one integer, and a print method for printing out the class info and integer. In the second CPP file, I declare I simply declare a global object in an anonymous namespace to ensure it can't be tampered with from an outside code. I then implement functions that piggyback off of this object's methods. Note I am also using the object's namespace so I don't have to repeat the namespace time and time again. The namespace and object-oriented code are confined to the CPP files and the class header file. The other header file, called by both the function CPP file and the C file, simply declares those functions in C linkage. Finally, 
I have implemented the main function in the C file and I simply call the C++ functions. C doesn't know what these functions do. It just knows how to call them. I'm going to compile the program using GCC. Okay, I have an error because GCC doesn't have access to the C++ standard library by itself. The C library, yes, but not the C++ library. To correct this, I only need to replace GCC with G++ in the command. Yes, this time it worked. You may have noticed in the main file that I have no means of pausing the program. In this case, I'm okay with that as I'm launching the program from inside the terminal. Consequently, even though the program will execute and exit quickly, the terminal window will remain open and the program's output will still be there. Yep, everything checks out. Before I conclude, I want to include the class header file and the C file to demonstrate what would happen. Okay, nothing happened, probably because the class header was already processed and the header guards kept it from being processed again. Let's try compiling the C file first this time. Okay, apparently in this case, C linkage was used by default. Thank you for watching, and my next video will involve leveraging compiler specific macros.